What's good people, it's James here coming back at you with another JTMT James Taught Me That video. This is the intro video, so welcome to the channel. I appreciate you all being here. Right off the rip, I do wanna talk about how that none of the videos are going to be deleted, none of them. They will be updated and you'll see that in the title and there'll be a link in the description to the updated version. I don't wanna delete any videos because I wanna preserve the comments. I wanna preserve the originality of that old video in case there is something a little bit different. I might update it and then I'll let you guys know. If you are interested, I'm using endless paper that's the app that I'm using on an iPad for these videos to kind of help with the visuals and let's just get right into it so predominantly we're gonna be talking about memorization over comprehension now comprehension is super important but I really didn't want to reinvent the wheel yet another educational YouTube channel about comprehension there's already so many and you have other resources like your textbook lectures Khan Academy crash course SciShow and there's even tutors on campus if you go to college so I really don't want to you know like add to this arsenal of comprehensive resources there are very few memorized resources and that's what this is gonna be about so I have this belief that you already understand the material I'm here to help you never forget it so if you don't already have an understanding then you need to go learn the material using one of those other resources and then come back here so that you can learn the mnemonics and you can learn some memorization tricks so that you'll never forget it so in order to talk about memorization we need to talk about the difference between recognition and recollection so recognition is identifying something when you encounter it so you encountered something it was brought to your attention and you see it and you can recognize what it is you can identify it recollection on the other hand is like bring back to one's mind i think of that scene in spongebob where he's trying to recall his name it's on a piece of paper stored in one of those file cabinets stored in one of the computers and he's searching all over trying to recall it and he can't because it's not there perhaps he could have recognized it if maybe if someone wrote it down on a piece of paper and asked him is this your name he could have recognized it but he couldn't recall the information he couldn't locate it in the file cabinets of his mind. And that's what I want you guys to be able to do is locate the information in the file cabinet of your mind. So if I give you an example here, this is a cartoon. We can recognize that it's a cartoon. We recognize a lab coat. So perhaps he's a doctor or a scientist. We can start to make assumptions based on our recognitions. We see his body language, you know, his hands and his grin. Maybe it's sinister in some way, but that's really all we can recognize when we look at this. So if I were to ask you some questions, what is his name? Well, you'd have to kind of recall his name. You recognize who he is is, but you need to recall his name. What TV show is he from? Now we're getting a little bit deeper into the recollection portion. So there's really not much information based on that image that you can get as to what TV show he's from. Who is his nemesis? So you really have to understand who he is and where he's from and some backstory behind him. You know, if I ask you who are some of his family members, who is his nemesis, stuff like that, I could even say who is the creator of the TV show. We're getting really deep into the recollection portion. You're gonna have to be able to answer questions like that and not really worry about the recognition portion of tests. So when we think about that, typically it's sorted into this like multiple choice versus short answer. So if I gave you that multiple choice and I said, who is this person? And you're like, oh, it's Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Well, I even tricked you a little bit in this multiple choice question. There's recognition and recollection involved. Maybe you recognize that that was Doofenshmirtz, but do you recall how to spell his name? Because most of you might have said A right off the rip, but the correct answer is D because I spelt it wrong in A. So now you have to be able to recall how to actually spell his name. But if you studied with the idea that all I'm gonna do is give you his picture and then blank lines and you have to fill it out. Who is he? Where is he from? Who is his nemesis? If that's how you study, you're gonna do much better on a test when you're sitting here like this because you're gonna have to actually write out his name so you'll know how to spell it. You're gonna know different things about him because you studied for more information than what you actually needed for the test, not the other way around. And when we look more into multiple choice questions, I tell people to cover the answers before reading the question because this forces you to recall the answer before you're guessing or you're doing some sort of process of elimination or POE and for the SAT you kind of have to be able to do that if you want to like get a really good score on the SAT you have to cover the answers because they trick you and they, they know you're going to use process of elimination and that should be your safety net that shouldn't be the first thing you do and one of my professors likes to define the difference of studying between performance and mastery as performance is just for the test that's that multiple choice mindset of study it's short term. You just need to recognize the right answer and that's good enough. You really don't even need to know what it means. You just recognized it and you're like, cool, it's done. Mastery, on the other hand, is completely different. That's for life. That's long term. And this is really important for college students because one day maybe you want to go into a master's program. Maybe you want to get like a very elite job, something that's highly selective. If it comes down to you and another candidate and they ask you some random interview question and the other candidate knows it and you don't because you studied for performance and not mastery, now you just 
lost out on that opportunity. There are more advantages in studying for mastery than just passing the test. And that's the point. You should be going to school with the intent and you're going to do better at life as a whole, not just pass the test and get the degree. So if I ask you which test is easier, most people are going to say short answer, right? Most people are going to say multiple choice. Multiple choice is way easier because you know the right answer is on the page. You know that the answer is in front of you. You just need to recognize which one's the right answer. Short answer and essay questions, that's going to be way harder. So the, the answer is study for the harder one. Study for short answer slash short essay. Study for recollection because that's where it's going to really get you. If you study for recollection, it's going to be so much easier. And how do you do that? You've got to practice pulling it out of your brain. Retrieve it from the file cabinet of your mind. So if I give you a blank image here and I said, who was the character above? And you were able to say it was Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Or if I said, what uh, show did I reference when I first talked about recollection? Where's the file cabinet of the mind? What was that from? And you said SpongeBob, you're recalling that information. You're not recognizing it. I didn't give you multiple choice and show you pictures. I gave you a blank screen. You were able to recall it from your memory. You retrieved it. So a common scenario where I see people mess up are binary switches. So I gave you a random definition of two completely random words that I just made up. We have blob and blub. Blob means increase and blub means decrease. Well, one of the things I've noticed when people are studying is they study both blob and blub. And that's not really necessary. You just need to focus on one. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's go in and we see I've created this mnemonic here for you, this little picture to kind of help you. We've slowly turned the U into a down arrow. So when I recognize the U, I recognize it looks like a down arrow. So now I can tell myself blub is down and decrease blob is the other one. And that's all I need to remember. This way you can kind of cut the material you need to study down in half because you know blob and blub go hand in hand, but you don't even need to memorize the definition. You just need to know blob and blub and blub is down blob is the other one. So it becomes a lot easier for you to, to study because you don't need to memorize everything. So now if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can at me on Twitter. Just send me like a YouTube link. If I don't have a video on the topic and you find another video on the topic and you're like, hey, can you make a memorization? Can you make some mnemonics around this video? I'll happily do that. I would love to. So make sure you comment on some of the other videos as well because I want to be able to make as many videos about memorization as I can because I feel like there's just not enough information out there to help you study, to help you on the cramming portion. And again, not just cramming for performance, but to kind of really cram it into your brain for mastery so that you will always remember these things. You'll always remember blub is down, blob is the other one. So thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.